Lackluster T-side on train for them, and they get absolutely decimated by Infinity. Now they're going up again against a much harder opponent in the Azuris, the Argentinian side here. So this is a real test to see how Infinity have progressed over these last two days, and if they yep. can actually keep up now. I think there's quite a few players on Infinity that can make a stand, but are those players able to get enough room for themselves to shine? So players you want to look out for, mobs, points especially. Spamsy's in there as well for some of the entries for Infinity, and they are on the T side. So let's see how this plays out. They de decide to take something pretty standard, some smokes into the A site and pushing into the A site, through the A site, and Ooh. deeply so, but they have been now cut off. The head of the snake, you saw three players made it all the way up towards the Ivy si or jungle side. They all died. So sure, this should be an easy route for them as Isaris have now picked it up the first round under their belt. A bomb plant for Infinity, however. Yeah, so Isaris play that pistol around with a heavy stack towards middle, actually pushing up, I believe, Myron towards the top of middle to begin that round and get some information for his team. While that's happening, Infinity do their A execute. They smoke off um, connector, deep connector, though, not just for the cross. They smoke off basically where the connector ends and where the stairs begin, as well as they smoke off spawn and try and take that jungle presence. Xerus do a good job of just holding that window, actually three members setting up a crossfire within that window. So when the Infinity players inevitably do come to take jungle, to take window from them, well, they're met with a firing squad and front of them in Azurus, they pick up a very easy pistol round. Yep, and they do, but uh, they did lose Nocti, and if there's any way to defeat Isurus, like we saw Knocking yesterday, Daytona, that. you need to keep you yep. need to break Isurus' economy and keep them low. Isurus is an amazing team when they have full sets, full rifles, and off in there for Noxie's hands, yep. and he has some room where his rifles are able to expand out behind him, and he can get some easy shots. But Isurus on the other side of that, when they're substandard weapons, when they have Fomuses, when they have SMGs, MP9s, they're not nearly as strong as a team. So if you can keep Isurus in this small, confined space, you will defeat them. Definitely can agree with that. Noxie, that's a good point you brought up. The fact that his AWP is instrumental to Azurus' success on CT side. We've seen him top fragging multiple times with that op, and the name of the game for Infinity will be keeping it out of his hands. It does look like Infinity now will be heading towards A with that pop flash. Spansy making that first contact, taking a lot of damage. Yeah, they are pushing in, but these first players that are over here towards the connector side are just going to cut this up. You don't Easy. have the smokes to be able to block this off like the pistol round, so when you cross that bomb over from Tetris into the site rather than uh, across underneath the palace and then get into default position, you're exposing yourselves to a couple angles, and that's what exactly what happens. The bomb's going to be dropped out there. There will be no further fruit for Infinity to be able to, to reap there, and Isurus are able to come out of that. Again, five players alive. That speaks volumes to them in the, into the latter parts of this. If they're able to get past this first rifle round, Isurus, I, it's going to be really hard to start to stop this train. Okay, and as we see the 2-0 scoreline hit, Infinity now will be picking up rifles going into this round, Dallas. We're still going to see Azurus with a couple of weaker weapons, that UMP staying on the back of Reversive, as well as Noxe keeping that Famous in hopes to win this round, and then most likely if he does stay alive, we'll see that Famous drop to a teammate that went down, and he'll pick up that AWP. But Infinity, to begin this round, will be running just a pretty simple default here. You're going to see the beat presence being made, two players towards the back of mid watching that aggression, as well as one player getting ready to watch a lower B aggression. So, for Infinity, they're going to wait out these smokes, these deep smokes that Azurus actually threw. And it did look like Spamsy was getting eager towards the B tunnels, but on 34 HP, he's going to have to fall back. And Noxie, actually, yeah, he he's going to have to fall back as well. He was completely iced right there, froze dead in his tracks. He didn't even shoot back, so he stays yeah. alive. Spamsy, he's the other wounded player. He's going to be leading the way into the underpass. So you've got a pretty standard default right now for yep. Isurus. With Max, he's going to be responsive of anything that's connector. He's anything for underpass out here as well. It'll be interesting to see if Infinity utilize a flashbang from top mid to get those players out from under that, that underpass position. Doesn't seem like they need to do that, though. Yeah, actually, Max is going to get a smoke coming across connector, nice but Spamzy now boosts up, actually able to take down 1962 on Cat. That's going to be the first kill of the round, going the way of Infinity here. As we pass the 45-second mark on the round, it looks like they are developing towards the A bomb site. We're seeing that bomb now pull over towards T spawn, as well as two other members on Infinity. So look for that execute to come in, but they're going to have to do it quick. Only 30 seconds left on the clock, Dallas. Well, the thing is, they've got Noxie at the firebox, and he is super tagged up. good spot. And he's, yeah, he's 
he's he's lit up pretty hard. So he's watching the palace side of that push. The thing is, there's nobody coming that side. So Myron is really single-handedly with an, an AUG to be able to stop these guys coming out of the A main. He's thrown them all tall, but it's a day late, dollar short. It's going to be behind the T side. Well, maybe they won't be able to retreat at that point. Davies gets the kill against Noxie. He was the very wounded player. A late push that comes out of the palace side. They might leave him up there, but you got to oh. get that bomb planted down. They stop it dead in its tracks, and now Reversive just needs to hide. Doesn't need to stay peek. alive. One second. What? Oh, they oh, want it. got it. They still want Jeez. it. Good Lord. But they uh, they definitely put that one on the, that on the line unnecessarily. That was scary. I mean, maybe there was a little bit of a miscommunication in terms of as to how the bomb would actually get picked up, maybe Reversive thought that it was going to be picked up earlier than it actually did. So he was just trying to pick into that site, possibly stop, maybe pick up another frag while that bomb's going down. But yeah, you're right. He didn't need to create that presence. He didn't need to get involved in the fight. And Azurus actually get that round by the skin of their teeth. Infinity almost pulling off that upset. Yeah, he was uh, he was definitely exposed there. Both of us, it took our breath away when we saw that he was peaking <laughs> that angle. It's like, dude, the clock's over. You're down to less than a second. And that round was the difference between a fraction of a second. I mean, it was it could have gone Infinity's way. So with everybody dying on Isaris' side, that train does chug along, but it's pretty slow. Here's Spamsy. We've seen this one before yesterday. He'll continue all the way through market. And the last time this happened, he plugged up everything up towards CT side with a little Mac 10 1962 has his AUG on Catwalk and three players that are in the market right now. Now, Isra's in a pretty good spot to be able to take this retake. Four players, one in access compared to your opponents, and your opponents are a little bit wounded here. Spamsy up tight against the wall. Right side window. Oh, man, 1962 just caught one in the temple, but he survives and returns a little bit of fire. It's Davies that's popping off, and Malbs as well. They're both in here behind the pillars. It's up to Myron alone in a 1v2. He's got the first. There might be information as to where oh, Davies is, but in. since he throws them all top up high, he's Ooh. got them both. I thought since he threw the molly high, he didn't have the information that Davies was back down on the site even though Davies got a kill. Yeah, I think that there was a calm to him that, hey, he's actually on the ground there. Don't worry about the upper B plat, but a very close round for Azurus. Once again, Myron getting away with 6 HP in that situation. I'd like to say 1962 towards that catwalk, able to sneak all the way up basically into sight, take down Spamsy, who is close towards that market window, pick up a second kill onto points before going down, is what allowed that retake to take place in the in general for the Argentinian squad. So a nice little round out of them, some great individual play out of 1962, and they're going to be up 4-0. Yeah. A couple kills from 1962 while he was so wounded, too. And he was alone on catwalk. It was the three-man push that was coming yeah. in through market. So that, that was it. Isaris had a one-man advantage on that retake. And even though they still killed Spamsy on entry of that, now having a two-man advantage, the last two from Infinity met actually pretty good work of that. So Isaris, Isaris are a little bit slow to get that economy growing. Infinity should actually have quite a bit in excess compared to your op their opponents here of Isaris on yeah, this round. Look at the economy right now. Max 3.6. Reversive 3.9, so they're going to be hurting going into this round, whereas the Infinity side, well, that money loss bonus is starting to add up. Their utility is starting to look good as well, and the only person really struggling into this round is going to be points who may not be able to pick up as much utility as his uh, teammates but he's still going to be able to get some nonetheless. And Azurus, on the other hand, we'll see MP9s on the field for them, UMPs. Myron most likely will get an AUG into his hands, but still a very costly round for the CTs. Yeah, it really is. I would almost rather see Noxy throw the AUG to somebody else, and then he takes an SMG so that he can, he can end up farm making for the more money. Yeah. yeah, and you leave him in reserve to the team. Uh, just because they know how valuable that is to get an AWP in his hands. And it's actually a little delayed at this point for how dominant they've been, but they've made a couple of mistakes here and there. Uh, it's just been a bloodbath, so that, that AWP hasn't been able to, mm -hmm. to have the growth that it desperately needs so far. We have seen mid-aggression early on from Isaris, and they've backed off that at this time. So you could see Infinity are actually reacting to that mid-aggression from the past handful of rounds. So they're going to burn off because of that, expecting somebody up there. They're going to burn off about 10, 15, some seconds, and realize that it's all clear. Yeah, this is a great mid-hold right now that from Azurus. It should be 1962 picking up this first frag onto Spamsy as he does fall back. The mid players towards top mid will be peaking. This is Noxie now getting takedown, and Myron chimes in to take down the second lower B player, Dallas. Still the man advantage in favor of Azurus. Yeah, it is. 
and they've got the idea. Oh man, Myron! They 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 highlighted Myron before the match, yep. and he is hot to trot. He picks up those two kills and has just really stopped Infinity. They're down to the 47 second mark, and they have nothing to speak up speak for it. And we had mentioned before that Isaris, they're not the best when it comes to having lackluster weapons. The SMGs. We didn't even get to see those SMGs play. That was all rifles at range doing all the legwork for Isaris. And it's still a four-on-one. It doesn't look like mobs will be able to do much of anything with 25 seconds, the bomb in Palace. Looking at the positioning of these CT players, he might be able to drop into the site, get that bomb down right away. But yeah, the post-plan scenario that he'll inevitably be in once getting that bomb down is what will bite him as he's going to be having to plant towards that default box, and he's not even going to go for it. Yeah. 10 seconds left on the clock. It's so it's a bit of a risk. He doesn't have the information in the world. A bomb plant would mean that you have rifles again in the next round, yep. but you're risking the one AK that you have. So it's like, do I turn this one AK into five AKs or do I just keep this one AK and guarantee that I have it into the next round? And that's what he chooses. So now you're probably going to have a little pistol armor coming in behind those AKs. Mm -hmm, Maybe mm -hmm. Infinity choose to play something a little faster. Remember, this is Infinity's map pick as well. So being down 5-0 here, I'm sure they're not happy with this scoreline. They're looking to pick up rounds as soon as possible. And because of that, they're going to be forcing Galils into this round. You're actually going to see points end up with a P250. So he's going to have quite a bit more economy than his teammates. That's an interesting decision from them. You generally want to keep the team's economy around the same. You don't want somebody really way above the other players. But points will be in that situation now. So a hard A execute yep. is what Infinity is looking for. They dig deep too, so they sacrifice a lot of the utility so that they can get some Galils up here. But looking at that, they've got three smokes. So I would say ticket booth, standard A jungle, smokes. and yep. yeah, stairs if you can. So sometimes that that jungle smoke that blocks off the stairs jungle. Sometimes there's a gap in there. Yep. A lot of times it, it it's not much to do anything about it. It's just guaranteed to be a, some kind of a gap to be able to get there. But there's that one. It does seem to do quite well favoring towards the, the stair side of things. So as long as the T's stay away from the bench, they should be fine. They're taking a lot of utility damage in response, but they have drawn first blood. They're pushing in towards Ticket Booth side to try and take this fight. The bomb is planted out there as well. So, so far, so good for Infinity if they can just flex a bit. Though there still are some CTs in behind the lines. Noxie from underneath. Somehow, he stayed there alive for quite some time. But Cruzen has been picking up three kills with a Galil. Of all things, he picks up the AUG but it seems to only be a curse at that point. It's 2v2. Spamsy, a man with a Galil, and then there's a Tech-9 floating around there. Only Davies now with his Tech-9 at range. He's upgraded to the Galil, and if this Galil were to get the kill, I believe it would end up getting all the kills for uh, Infinity's side. This one has a couple scratch marks into the uh, the buttstock of it. He's got them both. That Galil gets the ace. Cruzen picks up the first three with it, and then Davies picks it up for two more. Yeah, that was a good round out of Infinity there, and it really starts where you see Myron force that connector smoke. He jumps through it in efforts to maybe pick up one, two members, but he is going to be taken down right away. At that point, the retake does take play for Zerus, and it starts looking good. You see these two kills go their way almost instantaneously as Cruzen as well as Spamsy go down, but the final member, Davies, plays that ramp perfectly, able to take down the non the person not defusing the bomb essentially within almost instantaneously right. as soon as he shows up on his screen, and then it's an easy kill onto the bomb diffuser to get Infinity their first round. And they are putting Spamsy up, doing Spamsy things. He loves that MAC-10. He's got that little creeping smoke to be able to get him around this first corner. Uh-oh, this boost, though, is going to catch him completely off guard. It's just that the smoke is blocking their vision. Now they're going to end up... Actually, they've overshot the target. They're holding their fire for the sweet shots. They've got the what? first two. Almost the what? third as well. Noxie's going ham with a USP. Oh, my now goodness. Now the Eagle comes back in, and it's just Davies up above. He's got the bomb in his hand. Tons of time. He could back off from this. The thing is, as soon as he backs off... Suddenly, these pistols become rifles. Myron actually snuck right under Davies as well, and there it is. Myron picking up that AK, able to take down Davies, and wow, the really patience. that head stack, that the head patience. stack. Like, that was actually insane. Spamsy jumps out of that window, and Dallas, he doesn't check his left side. He gives it like a quick nod towards the get right, towards the catwalk, and then he just keeps on going. Then the double stack comes into fruition, and they're able to pick up yeah. three kills they're between just, two guys. They're like, hold, just don't shoot. Don't shoot, because there was a flashbang there. The player that was on top of the stack was had looking still, the and there was still yeah. a little bit of a smoke in there, too, that was in the apartments. It may have been obscuring his vision. But they hold, they hold, they hold, and then they unleash hell 
on Infinity, who again are going to play faster here. They get their first entry. Myron's able to finish off that second one as well. First thing, starting things off with a grenade. He took a little bit of a chip damage, it looks like, but that stung a bit. And they are keeping the T's off the site. They're fighting every tooth and nail for every yard. It's costing them. There's a bit of a sneak attack here from Mulbs, though. He's this at the bottom of big. mid, and he could come up from behind and catch some of your defenders here. Myron's going to get broadsided by this. He is taken down, and suddenly it's a 1v2, all for Noxie. Noxie now in window with this AWP. Will be dropping out here. Is he able to pick up a frag? It doesn't look like it. The Molly will land right in front of him as well. He's going to try and beat it. But Mobs waiting towards the top of stairs, able to take him down, able to get Infinity, their second round on the board. And is Zerus looking at their money, Dallas? We might actually see a force here because Myron as well as Max can pick up those rifles. 1962 can get an SMG on his, in his back pocket. Reverse of Inoxy will be down to pistols, but we've already seen them have success with pistols in their hands. So what are they going to decide to do? And they decide for a full eco. Not yep. a bad decision either. Just Still plenty of rounds in this half. Just some vanilla flavor. Yep. And they're looking to jump out the window right now. Mass push up and in. It's going to be points. The man defending this. And he is falling back. Recognizes something is a miss. And yeah, throws a flashbang there. Still in full retreat. He might end up hearing this. I believe he has. He has heard that the CTs have over pushed. So the A team pushes into that site. Points now holds the low ground looking for the headshot angles. They're trying to overwhelm his aim. Is a target rich. And everybody He's just peeking and popping up and down, up and down, up and down. He's able to pick up two. Still a good trade for Isaris. They've got an AK now. And yeah, they're they going to have get one more. They're going to have guns into the next round. But you know, Noxie having a USP, getting a kill over here on B and saving two AKs in the next, that might actually mean an additional round in the case that Isaris lose another one. And you actually see the Infinity side now within that A bomb site. I don't believe they're actually watching too many angles. Davies is watching A ramp as well as Halls. So there is an opportunity for yet one more kill to go the way of Reversive here. As Spamzy exits, look for a Reversive to pick up an easy frag. Oh, they're about to peek. There's the first contact. They recognize he's up there. He's trying to keep these T's close to this bomb. But yeah. yeah, they go. And uh, it is going to be Reversive that is committed to the detonation of the bomb. Two AKs survive out of that one. There's plenty of money for Isaris now as well. Okay, and 6-3 to three is our scoreline as Isaris will be buying up into this round. Infinity now with that AWP on the back of Spamzy. Look for him to get the opening kill maybe towards a ramp, maybe pushing out towards that top mid early on. Let's see what his spawn is actually here. Okay, so he's most likely going to head towards halls with that spawn, and yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, Myron's been popping off. He's been carrying the team so far, but I, I need to see some space made for Noxie. He can't end up in these 1v2 scenarios for himself with an AWP. He is a really good AWPer if he's able to pick off that first player and able to fall back into another position. Okay, do imagine we will see the window smoke as well as top mid smoke. You see the AWP of Spamzy positioned all the way towards the end of the hall. So the second that window smoke lands, I do imagine Myron will be falling back towards jungle because he's got no angles. And that's going to be the opportunity for Spamzy to get the opening kill. Here it comes. Yeah, Noxie's holding this first oh, one. Oh, he jumps across. Well, this is going to be interesting, too. Spamzy and others are over there, but there's a little bit of surprise on site. Max and Noxie are back-to-back, -back, watching A, Main, and Palace at a point-blank range fight. Each player is going to have two out in front of them. So a difficult ask for Noxie to be able to get, but he's going to have first contact. Spots the shoulder, misses his shot. He'll be able to dump this smoke here in response to the T's push through it, though. They throw a grenade up over the top, and now they turn and try and fall back into the site. Those, those positions, those initial positions, are great for the first entry, but they're not good as soon as the T's are able to start to create a beachhead. Yeah, they actually did a great job of smoking off the ramp like you mentioned, and they also Molotov off the apartments. Now the re-smoke will be landing towards ramp from Max, and with 30 seconds on the clock, Infinity's going to really have to pick up the pace towards this A site when they do commit, and that's going to give Azurus the opportunity to take advantage of some of these unorthodox spots like Sandwich that they've got themselves into. Now, they've had a player in Sandwich before, so expect it to be cleared. Last time it was there, it was Noxie. And so, yes, Max is quite quickly eviscerated out of that position. And then Noxie swings a bit too wide, trying to take that A main fight. And it's a 2v3. Excellent execution for Infinity, but they're just now planting the bomb. And they'll extend the round a little bit further. 1962 is the next to fall, but Reversive coming from CT side is going to start his 1v3 save. clutch. He's got a bit of a chance, though. Both of these T's are over here towards the firebox side, and they're going to give him a one-for-one -one peek. 
Well, they're actually going to double up in the firebox. So if Reversive even picks up this first frag, I highly doubt he's going to double check the firebox area for the second one. So a good setup coming out from Infinity as we do see Reversive moving closer and closer towards the site. Is he going to make contact? Is he going to get into this fight? He does, but the double swing as points able to trade him out now. Infinity onto their fourth round. And Azurus, well, that's going to prompt another save from them. Uh, yeah, they could go for a little bit of a purchase here. I'd say a little Some pistols half armor, pistol possibly. armor, and that's the difference maker because those two AKs that they saved previous to that, that's why Max and Reversive have $4,000, a little bit more than that as yep. well. Yep. So, sure, Noxie got that first kill at uh, the triple box, but what I was talking about where he needs space, he needs riflers to hold the other angles. If you lock Noxie down into A main and he's holding A main, he's going to do really well. But if he's got multiple angles and he, he has exactly. to create space for himself, he's going to start to suffer. So you saw him behind the triple box, and when he swung out, the opposing angle from Palace is what ended up taking him down. Cruzen now makes contact with Noxy, who had actually aggressed through those lower B tunnels. He will be prompted to fall back off of that. It does look like Infinity will be heading towards that A bomb site off of that contact as well. The only thing is, Azurus have made three rotations over towards this A bomb site. 1962 now pushing off Cat as well. So this is looking like Azurus are making the right gamble stack. They are. With two in mid, though, I think they're starting to push top scary. mid, and yeah, they're going to end up in a spot that's oh. not too favorable. Nice shot from Max. The one dig against points leaves Myron on site, and again, multiple angles means there's nowhere left to hide on the site. A little bit of ta love tap right there from Malbs against Cruzen. And your CT's working for a super long flank, but it does look like at least the player that's in ticket booth, Reversive, is trying to draw the attention his direction, but it's not, Infinity's not going to take that bait. So Davies now taking down 1962, is flanking through that T side of Palace. It is on reversive now, moving towards window where Cruzen will be waiting for him. And it will be Infinity getting to within one round of tying this one up. Great way to come alive here as we're nearing the end of this first half. Infinity winning the last four out of five rounds, Dallas, the last five out of six. Okay, and that's it. That's how you are going to defeat Isaris, is just keep them beaten down and make them... Th eventually, if Infinity can actually get ahead of this economy fight and Isaris are in a spot where they have to make decisions, okay, we're in an awkward spot. Do we do a force buy or do we save one of these rounds? Do we get a half buy or do we save one of these rounds? That's where Isaris are going to end up making some poor decisions, I feel. And Infinity are in a pretty good spot to be able to take the lead if they can just manage to take this one round. Okay, Zerus looking towards that mid-aggression very early on. They're not going to pressure it, but they are going to throw those Astralis smokes just to keep Infinity at bay. We will see the default, though, develop on other parts of the map as Infinity send a couple players towards those B tunnels, create a little bit of presence, but not too much happening for them. Otherwise, they're just waiting on their opportunity to move out towards middle, take some mid-control. does look like the bomb, however, will be moving towards B tunnels, and I do believe, Dallas, that is going to be the telltale sign of a B execute. Absolutely so, but we've seen disasters develop at the B site. 1962 and Reversive working together right now, and 1962 is prepping a high explosive grenade, and he has they have made Ooh. contact. Oh, well, maybe That's they have okay. it. I thought Reversive was going to shoulder peek that and tell him when to throw it, but he did get a little bit of chip damage in there. Spamzy didn't hurt him so much, but Malb's now vulnerable as two rifles are peering towards these angles. Bamsey make contact. Now here's the swing from Reversive. He's got the first, but he's quickly taken down. Too many eyes looking down the length of those apartment halls, and now they know. They recognize that Noxie is over here in Catwalk. He needs some help. That'll be coming from the market here soon enough. But the bomb's been planted, and you have multiple players that are still up in the apartments. This is going to be a really tough tick to be able to dig out. On top of that, Davies has lurked out towards A now. He's cut off that entire middle portion of the map. The final two members of Azurus moving into B bomb site now as Max makes contact with Cruzen. Is he able to pick up the frag? Well, time's starting to tick away, and look at where Davies is at. He's miles off with an excellent Molotov that basically secures the round at this point. A smoke does come in. That was a CT smoke that they managed to find. I think he even picked it off of a body. Max takes his fight. Still 2v2, though. They're working together. Sorry, it was 1v2. Didn't realize Max had lost his teammate. And Infinity have tied it up and, again, likely to take the lead. A beautiful execute to that B site. Yeah, Azurus had the idea of a bait and switch setup there. They had a good idea. But the problem is 1962 is playing that 
catwalk pillar, essentially. Not the ska pillar, but the one to the right of it where you can boost up and look into the tunnels. He took the fight. He committed to the fight. He wasn't jiggling. He wasn't looking to make contact. He took the op fight with an M4. Spamsy's able to take him down. In that moment, Reversive tries to go big by wide swinging out on the palace. And like you said, he still had about three eyes trained on him. And that's going to be, yeah, one going his way, but quickly traded out. The B bomb site then goes to infinity almost instantaneously, and that's a fairly easy round for them to clean up. Cruising just took a bit of a tick through the uh, through the smoke right there. 50 damage from the, I believe it was probably reverse of CZ, which would have been impressive unless it was a high explosive. And now you've got more pistols from Isaris. We have seen some creativity with them, but that was over towards the B site. And so this this round right now between Myron and uh, I believe his friend Max up here, we've seen this strategy played out before with Noxie in the position of where Max was, and they had an AWP and an AUG, and they weren't able to get those opener kills, but it's virtually the same contact. It's get contact, drop the smoke, try to extend the round. And Max even tries to eke out another second and a half out of that yeah. one by delaying his smoke. They are fighting for every second. Okay, Myron now playing very close on this balcony as the Infinity player is getting ready to execute out towards the A bomb site. Will be met with a little bit of contention initially. How's this one going to play out? Yeah, Myron wants to drop his smoke in A main as well. Can he get it out here in time? Does, does. Infinity care? They don't care. They're going to just punch straight through. Unfortunate for Myron, he ended up on the ladder. Oh. A nice one dig from two of them from Noxie, and you've done damage. You've got yourself into the 2v2 right now. 1962 is a healthy player. Reversive is so weak, but they've got that bomb control. That's going to be critical. A smoke, though, drops out in front of the stairs. They can be fine about this one, but over towards the bench side. 1962 oh. almost picks that up. Cruising. Actually, did he bottle him? Or did he molly? Uh, <laughs> he one sheet it regardless. I think he might have hit him with the Molotov in the face. Yeah, I think he bottled him. I think he actually him. bottled him. He bottled him. him. Yep. You he don't bottled. see that every day. Yeah. Nice bottle. That's a like a one in a... Nice arm. Yeah, right? As You see that one in a maybe 200 games or so? You think the Yankees saw that? Yeah, or I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's, see, let's see if we end up seeing that one again. That would be I a beautiful... We do. We'd be a beautiful thing to see, a rare sight that you end up bottling him. So, yes, yeah, when you burn somebody, you get the, the, the fire yeah, sign. It, but when you, you bottled him, you get the bottle sign. Exactly, exactly. All right, so Infinity now taking the lead for the first time in this game, Dallas. A nice comeback from them as we near the end of this first half, really just upsetting Azurus. We weren't expecting to see a scoreline like this. No, no, not quite. I knew that there was potential for Infinity. They have the right players, they have the right idea, and Azurus do have weaknesses in that case. And it's, so far, it seems to be a perfect storm. Infinity are able to beat their rifle rounds. They are able to keep them in this awkward spot, economically speaking. The players for Infinity that I mentioned need to stand up. Davies has been highlighted before the match. Malbs has come up huge. The only player I did say needs to stand up, the continued stand up, is Points. He's actually on the bottom of the board. So this could actually get worse for Isaris if Points starts to wake up. In 1962 actually didn't see either of these players swing out, but he's going to swing out Connector, pick up Cruzin, does get traded out by Spamsy. We are into a four-on-four, four, and with 50 seconds on the clock, it doesn't look like Infinity's decided on what site they want to hit. They're just going to continue lurking, and Davies, well, he's going to get a nice lurker kill onto Max yeah. there towards the apartments. Oh, and they pulled the rotation over to A. This is uh, Gamble Stack for Isaris. They're going to put all their eggs in this basket. Reversive takes the step ahead of the smoke on jungle and wants to take a fight against Spamsy. Spamsy? Ooh. That's going to sting a bit. Now that's going to make a retake possible for towards this B site. If the kill didn't happen, Isaris are probably into a save situation for the last round of the half because a double op into a into a 3v4 retake isn't all that pretty. But now that it's 3v3, you've got a shot. Yeah, Bomb will be going down on that B bomb site. That's going to prompt the members of Azurus now to rotate over. It's going to be reversive to take down Mobs. Myron does take down points as well. And just like that, almost instantaneously, Davies left to defend this bomb site on his own. Man, it's starting to shape up. Isaris desperately needs some rounds. There's the swing. Davies goes down. Noxie and Myron working together with double op. End up taking that. We're going to end up 7-7 seven to seven moving into the last round of the first half. There is, uh, I'd say, plenty of money on the side of Infinity. They're going to have multiple players that are in the 5,000 mark. Uh, points can share his 7,600 over to Malbs, who's the cheapest player on the team at 2,700. So no problem for Infinity to come roaring right back into this. But as a matter of fact, Isaris are going to be on this spot where, okay, we saved some ops in that round. We're going to have to share some augs so we can get some utility shared on those players that don't have enough to be able to afford guns themselves. 
Okay, and as freeze time comes undone, Azurus being able to tie this one back almost instantaneously. The second Infinity got that lead. The second they shifted into sixth gear and pulled in front, while well, Azurus hit the Nas and caught right up to them. Towards middle now, Infinity creating a little bit of presence. More of the same with this default, but Myron able to take down Malms to start the round in 1962. Surprise, He's going to pick surprise. up one of his own. There it is. They lined Quick it up. There was round. actually a little bit of a one-way smoke there in window. Yep. He's able to just eke out the right side of that one. And suddenly, the, the Infinity have confidence coming around oh. top mid, and they just get melted. And Noxy will continue to put up some numbers. So he closes out that round, and it is Infinity that end up dropping that last one. So Isaris just barely eke out that first half. Yeah, definitely a better half than what we expected coming out from Infinity. A phenomenal effort out of them. Shout out to Myron, 18 and 8, the, the guy who was mentioned prior to this game starting. This is that great yes. eco round from Isaris there that nobody saw coming. But after that, they really went quiet for a while. Dallas Infinity coming alive there, making this half really competitive for them, and we're going to end at 8-7. Yep, so we'll be right back in a second, guys. You're watching Pro League. Ladies and gents, welcome back to the Pro League. We are into our last day of Group D, into our first match. It's Isaris versus Infinity on this first map. It went 8-7. A little bit of a surprise as well as Infinity managed to collect seven rounds in their first half. Yeah, if you're looking at Infinity now and they're able to pick up this pistol round, I'd imagine, to, or I'm going to say, Dallas, that all momentum has swung in their favor. They're going to be in the driver's seat for the second half and they're going to actually put Azurus on that back burner, essentially, where they're going to be looking at it like, wow, these guys are keeping up with us. How are we going to stop this? 
Yeah, yeah, that could absolutely happen. So if Infinity are able to smother the fire before it becomes a roaring inferno, well, on Mirage, Mirage. <laughs> we will get to Inferno eventually. I think if it goes to a third map. Yep. So uh, this could be this could be a really interesting game. Right now, this seems to be pretty solid odds for the way the score is shaped up. Yeah, Three I mean, to one if for you're Infinity. An Infinity fan, yeah, man. You got to be happy right now. You're starting you to think, be happy. You're starting to think you're on top of the world. So it is a faster play for Isaris as they start to push their way towards the B apartments. They will break their stride, though. There are three defenders over here, and they're going to boost one up onto the platform and keep points over here back behind the jail. But now comes the burst. Mulbs makes first contact, and he absolutely gets overwhelmed. Way too many targets out there. Points now turns back from the, the jail and is suddenly taken right down. It is a complete one-sided affair, Ooh. it looks like. Myron continues to pop off a couple shots, and uh, Davies now left to look for an exit frag. If uh, if whatever he can manage to pull off. Yeah. I mean, a kill or two, not going to make that much of a difference. Maybe a grenade, maybe a flashbang in the next round would help out that they could maybe afford out of that. But uh, that would uh, that would be a pipe dream, it seems, right now. Man, yeah. look at them all coming at him. Stab him? Are they going to stab him? Oh, Ooh, my goodness. Okay. Davies okay. reloads a fresh mag. He's got two pistols underneath his feet right now as well. Reversive, peaking the angle, but now they hold that, that spot right next to the shelving unit. Thin angle, not much for uh, Davies to be able to shoot back from. Yeah, he does pick up a couple frags in there, but loses the armor. It would have been nice to see him save that armor. Would have provided him with a little bit of an outlet going into this round where he could have actually bought maybe a deagle, gone into this with deagle armor rather than just picking up this flashbang that we're going to see. But Infinity now, it does seem like they will be looking for a, a very aggressive eco round here. I do imagine maybe popping out this window towards middle. Hey, Davies did buy a flashbang. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Davies is going to pop all these players out of the window. Oh, goodness gracious. They may have been working a little bit of a, an edge on that smoke or caught a glimpse of them just as the smoke popped, but they got that opener kill at the cost of only 10 HP to cruise, and that is a welcome sight. But since it was a stacked up window, they realized that the B site's open, and Infinity now are scrambling, just trying to run right back into this site. Multiple Molotovs are headed in their direction. They're going to be filtered all through this door. Oh, they caught him off guard. They caught, uh, it looks like, Myron off guard trying to pull a grenade out, and you've got one man left, able to pick up a wounded player out here. That being reversive. Oh, that shot went right over over his shoulder. These kills are going to have so, so much close. impact in the following rounds. That being an eco round, if Reversive dies right there on top of where Myron and Noxy had already died, it's the same situation. Isaris want to be able to, to stand on top of the world, stand on top of a pile of money. Yeah, very early on to the half, so you don't want to be losing those guns very early, Dallas. That's a great point to bring up. Azuris losing quite a few players within that round. They do end up with three, but still at the same time, Infinity only brought USPs into that round. So for Infinity, that was a solid eco for them, taking down those weapons, taking them out of the hands of the Argentinian side. We are moving into the first gun round now as those nades coming towards window, and points is going to be triple naded out of the round. He's ejected. He's out of there, Dallas. We've seen that before as well. I don't know if it was Isaris that pulled that strategy off in the past couple days, but we've seen the triple nade go into the window before. They end up getting another kill against Spamzy over towards the A site, and Infinity right now holding on to their rifles close to their hearts. This utility coming in is starting to be a little bit of a problem. If Cruising does survive, he does get out of there. Now Malbs takes the fight. Surprisingly, he's got a little gift up here of Noxie. Didn't think that Noxie may have not suspected somebody was either in ladder room or going to be coming out out of the window nice so fast. Shot. So a 2v2 has developed, and look, sure, Isfras have the site, but you have to fall back together at this point with it being 2v2 to go right back out of the site and get the bomb. They yeah. might get shot in the back by Davies, too. They're actually going to make their way out to the wards of the bottom of the connector. Yeah, Davies saw the head of at least one player, so we will see the rotation coming in from Cruzen as he does move over towards that B bomb site. Little does he know, though, Zerus isn't heading towards that area of the map. They're, in fact, just trying to pick up this bomb to progress now further in the round. As we pass the 35-second mark here on the clock, they've got to start picking up the pace. This is allowed, actually, Davies now to reposition himself as well. He's sitting by the top of this connector, Dallas. So Azuris now, are they going to check him, or are they going to walk right by because time yep. is winding well, down. They went up through this direction, and they might think it's clear. There's a little bit of double take. Davies has the first. Does he expect the second back here? He hears him. He's going to be pinned in. 15 seconds foot race to the site. Reversive. Should have enough time to plant this wherever yep. his heart desires. And it is going to be cruising, wounded as he may, coming up through connector the same path. And after that, after so much footwork has gone across connector, could Reversive suspect that he's coming from this direction? He's gone a little bit shallower on this angle, has been spotted, and just finished the job. A little bit of extra piece of woodwork into Cruzen's body, but him being so low into HP, that's all that it took. 
Yeah, reversive actually pushes out just a little too far. You're saying he doesn't stay totally shallow towards that under balcony position. He gets a little bit more up front towards the front portion of that under balk spot, and that's what almost gets him killed there. Cruising being able to spot out his arms, able to get the first shots off. But yeah, you're right, Dallas. The lack of HP there on Cruising allows reversive the opportunity to simply close that one out. Okay, so now that the first three rounds have been nice taken shot. by Isaris, they're looking for a couple more just to keep the fires going. And it's Infinity that are so far laid flat on their first or their second half right here. Now they're getting overwhelmed on every front. They've lost their catwalk player. They've lost uh, everything but their connector player because Davies, Davies has now picked himself up an AK-47. If he swings out, Myron will have that locked up. So you got yourself another two kills on an eco round for Infinity. But keeping three alive is still positive income for Isaris. They'll continue to start to make money, even though, albeit slowly, it's still coming up. noxie has got his opt now. Yeah, the majority dropping the minority, as I would like to say there, in that situation when you do keep three people alive, you're not too worried because at the end of the day, the majority of your teammates are building up that economy. So a 12-7 to 7 score line is what we have in front of us right now, Dallas. As Noxie brings that AWP out towards the palace area, going to be looking for him now to start opening up that A bomb site while the rest of his teammates heading towards middle to push off any CTs trying to contest. Now Mob's been boosted up on top of the catwalk box, and as soon as this CT or this catwalk smoke fades, he'll be able to have a free and clear look down into the bottom side of this mid as Myron finds Spamzy. That was over towards the... That was actually Spamzy playing aggressive in A main, so you've lost two players so far that are supporting the A site, and now you have another one out there as well. They're dropping like flies. It's just cruising left. Everybody dying either direct support or in response to try and recoup the support to the A site. It was just Isaris all over the map. They all won their 1v1s, and they just they just dominated that round. Yeah, essentially, Infinity didn't have anybody in a trade position. Everybody was holding their own individual angles, looking to win their duels, and Isaris there will take advantage of that in great fashion, able to take every single 1v1, starting towards that A ramp, moving towards the A bomb site as well as middle on catwalk. Azurus just completely dominate that 20th round. Yeah, and I don't know if it's actually going to ever stop. This might be Isaris that just continues to lay waste on the track of the second half. And so far, they've won a quick five in a row. The timeout is used to try and ice the kicker and try and slow this momentum down in one way or another, because yeah. you're not winning it on your Ecos, you're not winning it on your rifles, you're not winning it anywhere. You need to somehow break this momentum, and that's why this timeout was taken. Isaris are now starting to feel a little bit comfortable, especially now that there's just utility and pistols for Infinity here, a little bit of chest armor that the AKs, and especially the AWP, won't have any problem cutting through. It does look like points. We'll be heading towards lower B. A couple pistols, a couple armor on the side of Infinity to get something going for them. Maybe they recover a weapon, Dallas. Maybe it's an AK in their hands. Those Noxie armor here. players can go off. Oh, that's scary the for Noxie. Noxie. I mean, that is that is an aggressive move for your opper. Very he aggressive. Is alone. Yeah, giving up a weapon like that would be just so detrimental to the Azurus cause on this T side that AWP could wreak havoc later in the round. But as Reversive does take down points towards lower B, we'll see Mulbs trying to make something happen for his side. And it's actually going to be Noxe taking him down as 1962 as well takes down Spammy. It will be 14 to 7 on the board yeah. for the Argentinian team. Isaris is a very momentum-based team. The way that they play better with rifles than they do with their SMGs and their pistols is if they can just maintain the rifles, they'll maintain wins over and over and over again. Now they double the efforts. Infinity at 7, Isaris at 14, and we've got a spot of uh, double op coming in. Everybody's got a scope, so you've got augs in there mixed in as well. So Infinity are really pouring it on in this round, but their utility does suffer a bit. They've got at least two grenades for everybody, but it's capped out at three. So you are a bit shortchanged in the long game. You're a bit shortchanged in the retake idea too. Does look like Reversive will be looking to flash off this B platform. Cruising not catching it, and he will be getting a very easy kill to start this round off to Reversive. That double op setup paying off already. The other two members of Infinity towards that B bomb site have aggressed themselves on towards Cat, where we're actually going to see Max slowly lurking, oh. able to pick up the first frag 
for the Azure side to make this a four on four. It was uh, he thought he had finished 1962, or he knew that he needed to at least transfer and defend himself. Oh, uh, okay. So he went from one to the next. It did surprise him a bit. So now you've heard an off that's over towards jungle. Do you continue to flirt with the idea of getting into this A site? Your opposing op is over towards the B site. That's cruising. They know there's an op over there as well. There goes Spamzy. He's down and out. So that one is gone, and you now have a two or a three to four advantage for Isaris right now. But it's going to be quickly claimed back. Myron popping out of this uh, palace side, boldly so, doing okay at it, but it doesn't land too many shots. Just some information for the team and showing that there's players still in the site. Now Davy should be known that they're able to overwhelm him, but everybody's coming in looking opposite directions. Noxie has to be the hero, not the best in 1vx clutch situations, but he sees the shadow and he's going to go straight for the plant in the smoke, and I think his his sho his shoes or feet were popping out of the bottom side of that smoke, and he gets spotted. Infinity barely pick up that round. Yeah, great effort from Davies within that site. He starts it off by Firebox, changes his position, picks up into that default box, his second kill as well, and just defending, allowing his rotations to come in. And he also gets a great timing kill on that Lurk, moving up towards jungle into that position. So overall, a strong round coming out from the Colombian player. He's able to keep Infinity in this game as they're going to move on to their eighth. Yep, they've still got a ways to go. And Isaris had saved up enough money for the rainy day that did end up passing. Uh, if they are to lose this round again, they would end up with two rounds of loss bonus on top of a decent amount of cash. And I think Noxie just got a blessing there. A CT smoke came in after the old Maltov. He was just about to walk out of that smoke anyways, or out of that Maltov, but took 70 damage from that one, cooking in it. And again, he's relatively alone up here. He has players just now starting to come in to support but Cruzen being up on top of this platform, he's he's not been up here before. This is not something that you anticipate, and he should have the advantage. Cruzen point blank range. Who has the shot? Noxy takes it. Now he comes down into oh. the site. What a great shot from him. He's so fast on this B site, whether he's playing CT or T. And now 1962 had been into the window boost, is able to get the rotator and be able to come in from behind. He's upset points his aim, but only momentarily. He's coming up massive himself. It's suddenly a How? 1v2. Points and Davies get three kills in rapid succession, and the bomb still hasn't even made it into the site. Max has to make his way and make some magic happen here. Probably getting the first frag, and points comes up single-handedly. Four kills defending that B site from market. That was a very bad round for Azuris to lose there. A complete B-site just, I mean, they fold on that side essentially there, Dallas. Noxe gets two great entry kills. At that point, he can just post up on market and hold anybody trying to come into the site. What does he choose to do? He chooses to keep on pressing the issue. Yeah. Moves into the marketplace. That's where Points is able to pick up his first kill. At the same time, the Lurks are trying to develop on Azuris, and they're going to be taken down as well. All of a sudden, Points picks up two kills within the B-bomb site, while the Infinity players are picking up kills towards market as well and this round turns on its head a very rough round for them to lose and i hope this isn't the turning point now as azurus moving up connector good smokes are actually not going to be spotted no, here 1962 underneath palace davies oh. is here he's got the first and gets a headshot into the next one but max is able to at least survive for the time being bombs planted on the front side of the triple boxes but uh, you have one t reversive back in a main you get to get more t's off the site before hell breaks loose they've smoked off that a main player and it really comes down to the two now that are playing on the connector side of things to defend each other. He's Myron. got the first. That's a big shot for him, but Spamzy takes out Max in return. They know Myron is over here at the bottom side of this. Do they expect the player in A main? Reversive coming out of the smoke will be able to pick up that next kill, secures the round, and secures the 15th. Yeah, some great shooting from Myron there in that lurk position towards the connector, able to pick off two players towards Catwalk, and even the second player there had complete advantage over him, but Myron's going to hit just a nutty shot there to get Azurus onto their 15th round. Another round that kind of looks scary there as Zerus head into that A bomb site. They actually don't check Davies right away. Davies is able to pick up that first entry kill, but because Davies gets no support after picking up that kill, it's easily traded out and then Azurus essentially just closed down that bomb site. This is going to be fast mid play. Multiple CT players are running up through mid. They've got their first kill and A execute might actually be the recipe for success considering there was fast and a lot of players into mid, so they continue to push in. A Maltov into connector stops three players from the CT side. Cruzen has to defend himself. There's the swing. He's got the first. He doesn't need to peek this right now because he's got teammates coming from the opposing side. Recursive. The flashbang comes in. Well applied, applied by Reversive there. They take a fight at CT and lose that as well. It looks like this is down to a 1v1 for the decider of this map, or it's extended. Malbs at the default position. Choose on that flash 
perfectly so. And now he advances. He needs to take the fight too reversive, knowing that there's a problem here. He's got no kit. He needs to fight sooner rather than later, but reversive is so far back. This is a great one. Yeah, reversive has timed this perfectly. Malbs might even think, oh, well, he is definitely coming from CT side. Avoids the flash. There's the peak. And even if he won that fight, there would be very little time for him to be able to take that bomb defuse. I don't think there was enough. 16 